Jason Aldean. He created a song, as usual. <laughs> but this song, it seems that everybody's having a problem with it. So I took the liberty of listening to it on live stream. If you're not familiar with the song I'm talking about, it's Try That in a Small Town from Jason Aldean. Amazing country singer. And after listening to the whole song, I just realized there is not a damn thing wrong in that song. All he's saying in that song is around and find out. He's not talking about anybody specific. He didn't mention a single bit of color. If you felt pressed about what he said in that song, he's talking about you. Because when he's talking about robbing a store, when he's talking about talking shit to the cops, I know what you're thinking. It's got to be black people, right? He didn't say that. He didn't say anything about color. He didn't say anything about race. And last time I checked, all races rob stores and talk shit to the cops. One just so happens to do a little bit more than usual. That's not the point. Jason Aldean made the song about small towns. Small towns don't put up with shit. Criminals in big cities are able to get away with more shit. The local shopkeepers are afraid of them. But in a small town, you can't get away with shit that you normally would get away with. And that's what he's saying. Try that in a small town. It ain't going to be the same. And he's right. And he's not talking about no damn sundown town because I know that's what people are going to say. Go to a small town and act a fool and see what happens. I don't need to say nothing else other than stream that song because that's a damn good song all right guys so we got a follow-up on the fake controversy surrounding jason aldean's anti-blm anti-antifa anti-left-wing violent song quote try that in a small town in which left-wing liberals and progressives and race hustlers are boohoo whining and crying racism because apparently this song according to them uh is pro lynching right it's pro lynching okay even though the song doesn't talk about lynching anybody okay the song uh is actually against violence but apparently being against left-wing violence means that you are pro lynching and we have to do a follow-up on this because that song after the left-wing outrage has now become one of the number one songs in the country okay it now occupies the number one spot on the itunes top songs and music videos charts uh as of wednesday evening okay and i love this right this is something we should celebrate right we should actually be happy every single time left is melt down and throw a fit because that ultimately means <laughs> that conservatives or you know people who agree with us okay or who pissed off the left they're probably going to make more money <laughs> right they're going to make a whole lot more money um Jason Aldean is going to make a whole lot more money because of the left-wing outrage. More people are going to listen to this song. They're going to stream this song. They're going to watch the music video. And he's going to make a whole lot more money uh, because of the outrage. Look what happened with the movie uh, The Sound of Freedom. The movie that talks about child trafficking, which is a real thing. And apparently the left doesn't want you to know that it's a real thing for whatever reason. I really don't understand it. I don't get it. It's one of the, uh, you know, wonders of the world, right? Why are liberals and Democrats so opposed to people knowing about child trafficking? I don't know. But anyways, um, that movie uh, is well on its way to grossing over a hundred million dollars. And I said that that's what would happen when the movie first came out because of the left wing outrage. I said, yeah, I mean, this, this movie is going to make a lot more money literally because these people are boohoo whining and crying about it. It's probably going to make over a hundred million dollars and lo and behold, it did. Yeah, that's what's happening. Okay. This is something to celebrate guys. I'm telling you, I'm very happy about this. Okay. I want the left to melt down even more, right? Keep boohoo whining and crying. Okay. So we're going to cover a Democrat, a black Democrat uh tennessee lawmaker justin jones okay uh in his meltdown over this song okay because he's from tennessee and he's one of the democrats that got kicked out of the state legislature uh for committing an insurrection at the capitol uh in response to gun violence right uh and then he you know got reinstated later on but uh again he's boohoo whining and crying over this and uh you know, he's just adding more fuel to the fire and making sure that more people are going to listen to this song and Jason Aldean is going to make more money, right? So I want to add to that, right, by reacting to this and laughing at this man's meltdown. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Country music star Jason Aldean is pushing back tonight against critics after his music video for the song Try That in a Small Town 
was pulled off of country music television. Joining me now tonight is Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones, who of course last joined me back in April when you were famously expelled and then reinstated after he led a gun control protest on the House floor in Tennessee after six people were killed at a school shooting in Nashville. Representative- AKA an insurrection, right? We gotta make it clear, he led an insurrection, okay? Because that's how this works. I don't like how CNN is trying to change the narrative here. This guy is an insurrectionist and they're hosting insurrectionists on a network. Thank you for being here with us again tonight. You know, Jason Aldean, as I noted, is defending this video, but I wonder what your reaction was when you heard the song and saw the video. Yes, well, thank you so much again for having me, Caitlin. Um, as a Tennessee lawmaker, as the youngest black lawmaker in our state, I felt like we had an obligation and a duty to condemn this heinous, vile, racist song that is really about um, harkening back to days past. There's no accident that he filmed this in the site um, of the Murray County Courthouse where the uh, race riot happened and where as well as the 1927 lynching of a young man who was 18 years old, um, Henry Cho, occurred. Um, this song is about normalizing racist violence, vigilantism, and white nationalism. And it's, it's about glorifying um, a South that we are moving forward from and that we're trying to move forward from here in Tennessee. <laughs> boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, that that's why I call it ass pull, okay? An ass pull is when you reach so far up your, your butt, right, to grab something because you have nothing. You just come out and all you got is a pile of dookie, right? Because that's what that was, okay? That's what that was, okay? Um, Here's the thing. I think it goes without saying that anybody who listens to that song that doesn't mention race, doesn't mention color, doesn't mention anybody's ethnicity at all. If you listen to that song about stealing and robbing and, you know, committing acts of violence and you automatically think that they're talking about black folks, you're probably the racist, right? You're the one with a negative stereotype of black folks, right? Because in my opinion, what I saw in regards to the left wing violence that happened during 2020, uh, it wasn't just black people, it was white people as well too, AKA Antifa, right? And he was talking about them too. I, I think that, you know, self-defense uh, is colorblind, right? I don't think that they're just gonna let whites, okay, run up in their small town and, uh, you know, rob and steal and to be agents of chaos, okay? I think that he was given a warning to anybody of any race that does that in a small town. Right. But again, these guys, OK, when you got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And what's funny to me is that if you are a conservative and you say, hey, look, the reason why black people are disproportionately pulled over by police or that they're disproportionately arrested or thrown in prison is because black people commit a disproportionate amount of the crimes, even though this is a fact. Right. This is a, <laughs> a statistical fact. They say, well, that's racist. Right. You can't say that. Right. But then when you talk about stopping crime and you don't talk about any race, you don't bring up race, race is not involved, they automatically think that you're talking about black folks because in their heads, they know that black people commit a disproportionate amount of the crimes, right? It's amazing. The logic of the left is truly something to behold, right? Because there is no logic, okay? Just emotions and feelings. Um, and then he wants to talk about the courthouse, okay? And the fact that, you know, hey, they filmed the music video at a courthouse with controversial history, right? But Candace Owens pointed out something on Twitter that I think was an excellent point, which is that there's been many films and movies that have been shot at this courthouse because it's a historic courthouse, and I'm pretty sure it's a beautiful location, including the Hannah Montana movie. So is Miley Cyrus a racist now? Should she be condemned uh, and hung on the woke cross, right? Because she was in a movie that shot at that location. Okay, because that to me seems to be the logical conclusion if you want to listen to the left <laughs> who has concluded that, hey, if you make a music video or if you film anything at this courthouse, uh, that means you're automatically a racist. Okay, that means you are pro lynching, right? You want to lynch Negroes. Okay, which again, it's just, <laughs> it's ridiculous. These people, again, they, they can't let go of the past. They really can't. Okay, and all this fake outrage is just, is getting old. And Aldine, obviously, he didn't write the song, but clearly sings it and you know for some of the lyrics we were looking at them earlier one of them uh, is uh cuss out a cop spit in his face stomp on the flag and light it up yeah you think you're tough we'll try that in a small town are those the lyrics that that you're referencing 
Those lyrics and the lyric that says, see how far you make it down the road. I mean, this is a lynching anthem. It's, a, it's, a, it's an anthem that reminds me of the stories of young men like Trayvon Martin, of Ralph Yarl, um, you know, young men, Ahmaud Arbery, who were killed by vigil white vigilantes. I mean, this song is not What? About <laughs> what? What? Uh, Ralph Yarl was not killed, right? And none of those situations that he brought up had anything to do with this song, right? What this song is talking about is left-wing agents of chaos who have committed acts of violence, okay? Now, again, what's funny is that CNN refuses to actually ask this politician about that. Well, do you condemn the actual violence that the song is talking about, right? Again, their star uh, anchor, Caitlin Collins, okay, who they think is going to save the network, right? She's not. But the real question here, if you, if you are a real journalist, you should ask, okay, since you're against violence when it comes to these words, since these words are so violent, what do you have to say about the actual violence that it's referring to? Do you have anything to say about that? More importantly, do you have anything to say about the violence currently going on in your state? For, for example, in Memphis, Tennessee, where you have black people being killed left and right. One of the deadliest cities, not just in the United States, but in the world, right? Memphis, Tennessee is one of the deadliest cities in the world, but these people want to boohoo, whine, and cry about the violence that is being done from words and not the actual violence that is happening in the cities in their own states. Again, it's amazing how that works. It's amazing out um, small towns because if it was about small towns where was Jason Aldean when the, the Murray County people were fighting for their clean water where was he when where hospitals in these small towns were closing where was he when people in these communities were suffering from starvation wages nowhere to be found but instead he comes to sing a song that harkens back to the vision that harkens back to fear of outsiders this this doesn't have anything that doesn't have anything to do with nothing right that has nothing to do with anything at all what you just said we're talking about violence okay political violence where are you when it comes to the actual violence being done in the cities in your state okay where are you on that that is a relevant question that's a real question where are you when it comes to the rap lyrics that are influencing violent behavior in black communities since you care about black lives so much there are many more black people that are killed on a daily basis over some thug influenced by rap, okay, then black people killed by somebody influenced by a country song. In fact, that's never happened, right? That's never happened. Just like there's never been a country singer that has been killed over some country music beef, right? I, 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 I've never seen that. We've never seen that. But we do see rappers get killed left and right over rap beef. In the lyrics in their rap songs, we see it all the time. And then they turn around and they rap about it. They brag about it. So again, miss me with the fake outrage here. You're bringing up things that have nothing to do with the topic at hand. Violence is the topic at hand. And since you want to talk about that, let's talk about it. Where are you when it comes to the violence in, in these liberal cities? Where are you when it comes to the violence that's promoted in these rap lyrics since this is what you want to have a conversation about? But again, CNN is going to fail to do their job. And this is why the network is failing. Racist um, violence that led my grandparents to leave um, these small towns, fleeing Jim Crow terrorism. Um, you know, this is this is this is something that we must condemn because if we normalize ra this racist, violent rhetoric. Then we normalize racist, violent actions, and we cannot allow that because we see what's happening in this nation. Um, I was expelled challenging gun violence. This song is about this proliferation of guns in our communities, of, of violence, of taking things into our own hands when we feel threatened by people because they're different than us. I mean, this is. <laughs> shameful and we not because they're committing acts of violence but because they're different than us again where's the pushback here from caitlin collins you let this man come on your network and blatantly lie and misrepresent what the song means and what it's talking about and there's zero pushback again th this is why liberal media is a disgrace right this is a disgrace we must condemn it what do you make of of how he noted i mean jason aldean for those who don't remember was was obviously per performing at that festival in las vegas when a gunman opened fire and killed 58 people it was the deadliest mass shooting in american history and he said in response quote no one including me wants to continue to see senseless headlines or, or families ripped apart i mean do you think that that rings true when you listen to the song again look here's the thing i don't think this is a terrible question but that's not the next question that you ask after you let this man just flat out lie on your network and misrepresent what the song means. You have to ask this guy. You have to ask him. Well, what do you think about 
the actual violence that he's talking about in the, the music. What do, you, what do you think about that? Like, do, do you think that he has a legitimate point about the violence that was done? And what makes you think that he's talking about just black people? What about that song makes you think that he's just talking about black folks? Considering how the violence that he's talking about was committed by people of all races, including whites. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly, you know, why you're coming to this conclusion. Do you believe that black people commit most of the crimes? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, that's a question that a real journalist would ask. I get that. I, or, or you got to ask him about the violence going on in his own cities, right? And, and, and rap lyrics. Okay, well, since you're standing up against this, okay, you know, how do you feel about these rap lyrics that people argue are promoting violence? I, I can't stand these people because this is an opportunity to expose these clowns for who they really are. Okay. And a fake outrage. And she just completely drops the ball. You just completely drop the ball. You're asking about things that are not as relevant. I mean, when I listen to the song, I hear this normalization of gun extremism. We are a state that has been plagued by mass shootings just this year, Covenant, you know, elementary school. This is not about bringing us together, but it's about lifting up division and fear of, of neighbor. Um, this is not about caring for each other. Um, you know, it, it, it's very shameful that this is what he chose to offer in light of what we saw this year. Um, in Murray County, where he performed the song, just last week, the KKK left flyers in front of black churches. I mean, let's, let's be honest about what this is about. And so we must be truthful to condemn this, we, about the proliferation of guns in our community, our vision is a new South, a South where we care for each other, where we uplift um, the beloved community, where we lift up a community where our kids are protected and not, you know, guns. And so this is not about ending violence. This song is about promoting violence, normalizing violence, particularly white vigilante violence. And Jason Aldean should be ashamed of himself for promoting this song that, that seeks um, our darkest history instead of our better angels in this nation. This is... Tennessee State Representative wow. Justin Jones, thank you for joining us today. Wow, wow. Caitlin Collins should be fired, bro. I'm so serious. But again, you know, this is why CNN is, is failing. This is why nobody watches the network because you have a opportunity to quite literally, again, expose this man for the hypocrite that he is. Okay. And the fact that these people don't give a damn about the actual real violence that is happening to black people in black communities. You had a prime opportunity to put this man on the hot seat and you failed because you don't want to challenge these people. You just let them come on your network and spew nonsense. Man, I'm, I, <laughs> I was supposed to laugh at this, okay? I wasn't supposed to get mad. But I get mad because this is, th this is the media. This is why these people are disrespected. This is why people look down on so-called journalists. Because this woman is clearly afraid to ask obvious questions that you should be asking to people like him who are boohoo whining and crying about the violence that comes from these words when, again, this man is black. He's in Tennessee where you have, again, some of the deadliest cities in the world, okay? Uh, she should be asking about that. Where's the concern over that? Because we all know if that was Trump, she would be challenging every single word that comes out of this man's mouth just like she did at the CNN town hall. She'd be ready to the debate. She wouldn't just let him go on the network and spew that type of nonsense. But what's happening here, what's happening is that, well, she don't want to be called racist, right? She doesn't want to challenge this fool because, again, she might be called racist. Well, Kaylin Collin was being racist by talking about rap lyrics and how black people were being killed in cities like Memphis, right? That's what would have happened. They would have said she's a racist. But, again, this is why the mainstream liberal media is failing. This is why networks like CNN can't get viewership because of interviews like this. This is a disgrace. This is an absolute disgrace. She should be fired for this. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.